In this video, we're going to continue with the UI theme by making our own sliders to replace the default sprites in Unity. So make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and let's get started. I'll create a few different sliders so that we can look at all the different options for them in Unity. I'm going to focus on the fill sprite since there's not really anything special about how we treat the background or the handle of the slider. I'll use a couple different brush presets to make some different sliders. And it'll make sense why I'm making multiple sliders when we look at the different options later. Now we can remove the background and then export our image into the asset folder in our Unity project. Next we want to change the settings on the image in the inspector. So I'll select the image in the asset folder and first we'll make sure we set it as a sprite. Then we can set the sprite mode to multiple, then apply the settings. If you haven't already, you're going to need to install the 2D sprite package from the package manager. And then we can go to the sprite editor and split up our sprites. For sliders, it's important to set the bounds for each sprite as well, since we're going to be using image types that require boundaries on them. You want to use the bounds to cut off any parts of the sprite that you don't want to stretch or repeat. So for me, I'm going to cut off the ends of the sliders and any details that shouldn't be stretched. Now let's add some sliders into the scene. I'm going to set the default value to 0.5 so that it's easier to see what the fill area will look like. I'm also going to remove the background since it's optional and I don't really like how it looks anyways. We also need to remember how tall we made the sprites and then adjust the size of the slider to match that. Since I made all of my sprites 30 pixels tall, I'm going to set the height of the slider to 30. We'll still have some problems since the fill area is defined as smaller than the slider area, so I like to make sure that the fill area is stretched to be the same size as the slider. For some of the image types, you may also want to keep the aspect ratio the same, so since we increase the height by 50%, I'll also increase the width by 50%. Then you just need to adjust the size of the handle. Or if you don't want to see the handle, you can disable the image component on it. Now I'm going to copy and paste this slider a couple of times so we can see how each of our sprites behaves with different image types. You usually don't want to use the simple image type for sliders since the image just gets stretched to fill the entire fill area. But it's possible that's what you want. Let's start by looking at what the sliced image type does to each of our sliders. The simplest slider works really well with this option. But if we look at the two sliders that have more detail to them, we can see that the textures are getting stretched as we move the slider. This image type works by using the bounds that we set. If we look at the inspector for one of the sliders, we can see that the bounds are shown by the dotted lines on the sprite at the bottom. Sliced images will stretch anything within the bounds to make the image fit the space it's given. Since the simple slider only has a solid color in the bounds, we can't tell that it's being stretched like we can with the detailed sliders. Now let's look at the tiled option. We can see that this image type seems to work for all of the sliders. I like this option because to me it seems like it works the best for everything, but it can be difficult to use if you don't understand how it works. So let's go back and look at the bounds on the sprite again. Just like a sliced image, a tiled image will use the portion inside the bounds to fill the entire area. But instead of stretching the bound area, a tiled image will tile that bound area, so the portion within the bounds gets repeated throughout the slider. So we can see in this slider the details in the middle are getting repeated, and then we just slap the ends onto it. The last option is the filled image type, and this one is a bit difficult to explain, so if you don't understand my explanation, it's also covered in the Unity documentation that I'm going to link to in the description. 
When we use this image type, we need to make sure we select the horizontal fill method, and then you can set the origin as either left or right. If you remember, I made one of the sliders shorter than the others, and that's so I could explain how this image type works. If we set that slider all the way to the max value, we can see that it's just a stretched version of the image. So if I set the size of the slider to match the sprite and disable the handle image, it might be easier to see how it works. As I change the value, you can see that Unity will only render the image up to a certain point. To me, this seems like the most difficult image type to use since you have to choose the size of the slider outside of Unity, but it gives you some options that the other image types don't. You can experiment with the different fill methods and see what they do, and maybe you can find a good way to use them. That's all for this tutorial, so if you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.